Hare Krishna. Do men have no right to speak on abortion because they do not carry a child? Answer. There is a valid concern underlying this question and there are some questionable premises. Let's look at them. The valid concern is clearly that somebody who doesn't know anything about a subject starts pontificating on it and starts giving advice or even instruction even when they have no first-hand experience of that subject. That can lead to damage or even disaster. So if a person who has no medical background starts instructing, give medical instruction, that would be a huge problem. Uh, having said that, if let's look further at the, this particular premise. So first is that abor abortion, is it just a woman's issue? Certainly, a woman is significantly involved because she's carrying the baby. But along with that, we are, uh, abortion is a uh, related with pregnancy, which is related with begetting of progeny, which is of concern for all of humanity because it is a matter of the future of humanity. And anything that concerns humanity at large will need to be addressed by humanity at large, not just the particular member of humanity who is a particular section of humanity that is actively involved or primarily involved. Let's consider an example. Consider the recent uh, pandemic, during which social pressure as well as governmental legislation mandated and even insisted that everyone wear, wear masks in public, sometimes in their homes, sometimes even in private. Uh, what happened to the idea of my body, my choice? Well, no. My choice ends where, as they say, my freedom ends where someone else's nose begins. If my free actions are having detrimental or disastrous consequences for others, then I need to curtail my freedom, my choice. So we have a right to our freedom, but only till it doesn't encroach on others. So the decisions with respect to begetting a child affect not just the women, but all of humanity. And therefore, to say that nobody except the a woman should have the right to speak about abortion is to have a very reductionistic view about how big the issue is. Secondly, it's again not a woman's issue alone because a woman alone doesn't beget a child. There are two people required and there's a male involved over, them, over there. So here we are not talking about specifically what one particular woman should be doing. We're talking about the broad issue of abortion and the broad issue of carrying a baby. And when a man is involved in the, in the conception and in traditional society where there was a stabler family structure, the man would be involved also in caring for not just the baby, but also for the mother. Before she was, when she, before the, delivery when she was expecting and after that in caring for both. So certainly men have speak in the issue because it's their child also. Now of course in today's situation it could be that men many times men are irresponsible and don't care about the issue. So yes those are exceptions but the normal way nature biology and uh, nature and biology structured humanity is that Two, both, both genders are required for conceiving a child and both genders are required for caring for the child. And thirdly, once we start saying that only a person who has had first-hand experience on an issue should start, uh, should have the right to comment on the issue, then where will we stop this? No. For example, one of the ways humanity learns and grows is by sharing one's experience and sharing the insights one gets from one's experience. Even if one's experience may not be the same as somebody else's experience. So if we take this to an absolute, make this into an absolute principle that only first-hand experience 
is the basis for giving instruction to anyone else then children could say to their parents that you haven't lived in the smartphone generation you haven't lived in the social media generation you weren't young at that time so you have no right to speak and guide us or regulate our social media use because you don't have first hand experience or even further if you just want to focus on women uh, does that mean that a woman who has ne- never had a child not because she chose not to but because biology didn't allow it does she have no right to speak on abortion because she never carried a child we could take this further and say that if a woman has not had an abortion then she doesn't have uh, or she has not been in a situation where she has to consider abortion so she doesn't have a right to speak on it and then we could take it further and say that if a woman who who is currently contemplating abortion her situation is such that nobody else has been that situation so even other women who chose to have abortion or chose not to have abortion even if they were in similar situations they're not in identical situations so once we start uh, reducing the criteria for giving inputs to first hand experience ultimately we come down to the point that everyone's first hand experience is unique and we will degenerate into a tribal mentality where we'll become more and more isolated one tribe has no right to speak on any issue related to the other tribe and the tribal lot tribes will not just be males and females it could be females who have carried a child or not carried a child females who have had abortion and not had an abortion females who have been in particular situations while contemplating abortion females who have not been in that particular situation and ultimately the criteria of first hand uh, experience will degenerate to make us completely isolated individuals who cannot or will not take input from anyone else because no one else has had that first hand experience their first hand experience so the the beauty and the glory of humanity is that we can learn from others even if their experiences are different from ours so therefore from these three perspectives firstly that it is a issue not just about it it is a issue about humanity's future and it is a issue that is started by the involvement of males not just females alone and the humans learn and grow by gaining perspectives different from their own a doctor may never have experienced the specific pain that a patient is going through does that mean a doctor cannot treat the patient i'm not saying males are like doctors and females are like uh, patients i'm simply saying that where do we uh, where else do we apply this first person criteria to avoid taking inputs and where will once we go on that path where will we stop so this is a issue concerning humanity at large and the point is not that the rest of society or women have to dictate to women what they should do but everybody has to recognize that this is a issue in which everyone has stakes and yes women have to take primary responsibility uh, in big, in carrying a child and that has role has to be acknowledged their voice has to be given significance but that does not mean their voice has to have monopoly it's a shared human issue and there has to be shared human serious deliberation on the right course of action thank you hari krishna